what an extraordinary year for Scandinavian music when probably the two greatest composers from this part of the world have big anniversaries, Sibelius and Nielsen. And what a wonderful thing for Berlin to have such a lot of Nielsen played all together. Because although his music is sometimes played here, it has never really been a centre. And when I look at the Musikfest programme, also to find the orchestra playing with whom he was a member of the violin section, that goes back one of the oldest orchestras in the world, the Royal Danish Orchestra, is going to be a particular delight. When I went a couple of years ago to Denmark to work with the Royal Danish Orchestra, you go through the theatre because indeed they're also the opera orchestra, and there are photographs of the orchestra throughout the time. And particularly there's a, a photograph from maybe the turn of the 20th century, the very end of the 19th century, and you see a picture of 120 men, for indeed they were all men. And all of them, except one, have wonderful moustaches from small to, lux to luxuriant. A lot of facial hair. Very, very beautifully, neatly tidied. The utterly un-Danish, if I may say so, it seems now. And then, at one corner, there's what seems like a totally modern person with completely clean-shaven and with hair sticking absolutely straight up and with a pair of extraordinary penetrating eyes. And there is Carl Nielsen, uh, a member of the second violin section. He must have been a firebrand and an impossible orchestral player. But you can see that he's different from everybody else. You only even have to look at the picture to see that this man would write astonishing music. Now, his, his hair stood up like this to the end of his life. And the strength of personality and the originality of his work lasted to the end of his life. Now, if you hear his six symphonies from number one to six, you hear one very strong personality with such different modes of expression that it's almost, uh, it's almost not to believe. But also what you see is a symphonist with one of the, m the most powerful formal techniques since Beethoven. Uh, and although in many ways he's a very modern and very unusual composer, he's also absolutely back into the line of classicism. And the music sounds like nobody else's. And he's willing to put metaphors of destruction, for instance, into a piece which are so clear. Uh, at the end of the fourth symphony, the inextinguishable, which I play with the Berlin Philharmonic this year, in the, the very beginning of the finale section, a second timpanist begins to play. And there is a war between the two sides of the stage with the two timpanists, which threaten to simply overwhelm the music. And in fact, the music overwhelms the timpani and forces it to become part of it in a glorious E major. Uh, and in this way, I mean, this is a First World, First World War piece. It's one of the most powerful pieces about war and destruction and the human spirit there has ever been. But there are many masterpieces and many masterpieces which are being played within the Musikfest. Uh, but it's wonderful that the music fest pairs Schoenberg and Nielsen together and realizes actually that these utterly different people have such a, a powerful link uh, and some similarity in that they were taking very new paths but they were utterly in a foundation of what, of what went before. Uh, and I hope that Berlin audiences both live uh, and on the DCH will have this wonderful opportunity to explore one of our greatest composers and still in a strange way, 
one of Europe's most neglected composers. <laughs>